Uh, we're going to start in Egypt and uh, the EU trying to get more involved in uh, bringing an end to the crisis there. Catherine Ashton, the first foreign diplomat to meet the ousted President Mohamed Morsi today. What have you got on that? It's, I think it's an interesting one because it's pretty obvious that within Egypt people don't really know what's going to happen you know, or, or where, where it's going to go. So certainly I think European or American diplomats don't know any better Maybe and they're in there trying right. to look kind of certain and so, sound reassuring and sound like they kind of know where things are going to go but they haven't a clue basically like the rest of us and like most of Egypt so uh, there you have photos of Catherine Ashton uh, but not with Mohamed Morsi she met no, him for two hours him, but we, we saw no photos whatsoever which in itself shows what a delicate issue it is no photos being allowed uh, of that meeting some people are wondering did she refer to him as Mr President during, the, during their two hour cell meeting because you know from the point of view of a lot of people in Egypt he was ousted uh, well he was ousted <laughs> he was, he was from, unfairly ousted that's right from the point of view of some France is also calling for Morsi to be freed that's a headline in today's Huffington Post mm -hmm. which shows that it is obviously a very tricky one for Catherine Ashton to handle uh, speaking in the name of the EU and then you've got France saying he should be freed etc. This was a photo of her with uh, Mohamed El Baradai currently the vice president and apparently uh, because he is so supportive of uh, the uh, the ouster of Mohamed Morsi uh, she kind of scarpered out of the meeting at one point when a slightly um, what would you say delicate question was asked she said I've got to, I've got to leave uh, this is a tweet uh, being relayed by uh, where is it? There it is. Ayman Moyaldin of NBC saying that she left in the middle of the press conference when El Baradai, uh, when he was saying that she had to catch her flight, which wouldn't wait for her. Hashtag awkward. I think any <laughs> plane would wait for somebody in her position. So uh, yeah, she clearly so she you? clearly wanted to get out of there. No easier no easier for the US. Uh, this article in the New York Times saying that They're it's a real, a, back, a real balancing act, especially mm. with what's going on with the Middle East uh, peace process and Egypt playing a crucial role in, uh, I suppose, the, the Sinai with, you know, keeping the peace, etc., etc. So it's a really difficult one. Lamentable, says this tweet, the White House has not conducted a strategic review of its Egypt policy since 2011. So both the EU and the US, I think, are kind of scratching their heads about this one. And this one here, I think, maybe sums it up. Here it is. Shadi Hamid of the Brookings Doha Centre. Mm -hmm. Mass hysteria engulfing Egypt post-coup. It's like no recent case I'm familiar with. Political science doesn't have the tools to explain this. So I think well, the, if political the, science the, the doesn't... pundits don't have the words, who does? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on to something else. Now, the Chinese are often accused of, of ripping things <laughs> off and doing dodgy, cheap, <laughs> fake copies. Uh, now they've managed to do the whole city of Paris. That's seems. right, or at least some uh, an attempted wow, replica. Let's good. take a look at some of these photos, first of all. Uh, this is about 200 kilometres from Shanghai. And I think we have a, we have the images here. That's uh, incredible. Vice magazine uh, went there, right, back in May. The French media have picked up on it now and it's been doing the rounds of social media in the last year or two. Look at that. It's pretty impressive in terms of the axes, etc. Trocadero, the Eiffel Tower, obviously not quite on the same scale. But the thing is, right, this this town about 200 kilometres from Shanghai. Live there? It looks pretty empty. That's the thing, right? It has capacity for about 100,000 people to live there. They started building it in 2007 and actually only about 30 people live really? there. So let's take a listen to uh, Vice, Cars Vice magazine correspondent. Uh, I think it's Ryan Duffy speaking about uh, the weirdness of the place. So they decided to build this pretty impressive replica of the tower, which is a fine idea. And then they built all of these apartment buildings as far as the eye can see, which was also a fine idea until everyone decided collectively, we don't want to live there. Wow, impressive stuff. There you go. Probably a bit <laughs> quieter than most streets in Paris, Absolutely. I would imagine. Absolutely, less traffic, that's for sure. Uh, let's look at a video you've got. Uh, it's the former French president, uh, François Mitterrand. This is harking back to a day when the French were much more snippy about any creeping uh, Anglo, uh, Anglo expressions yes. creeping in. Uh, it's a video that's been doing the rounds on social media in the last while, and it shows François Mitterrand getting pretty annoyed with an aide when she uses a certain very common word used by the French. Tout le monde dit OK, sauf François Mitterrand. OK, Monsieur le Président, quand vous voulez. OK, non. Pourquoi OK Pardon. Euh, J'avais dit plusieurs fois. J'avais plusieurs fois que je vous le fais observer. C'est vrai, vous avez raison. Alors pourquoi OK Parce que j'ai tort. Mais oui, pourquoi, ré, ré, pourquoi recommencer On oublie. <coughs> And bam, <laughs> back in your place. It's like the babysitting, the weekend, uh, all the rest of it. I think that one's become a bit more acceptable now. Okay. Okay, yeah. I think it's, you know, it's pretty much 
been legitimised. <laughs> all right, James, thanks very much. James Green in there with Media Watch. We've got all the day's top business and financial news now with Katerina Vitelsi.